for 55. Flashing ahead in style, in value, in performance. Yes, it's the Flair Fashion Dodge for 55. Bringing you the brightest family show on television. Danny Thomas. Gene Hagen as his wife, and Sherry Jackson and Rusty Hamer as their children. Make room for Daddy! Come on, Benny, finish your coffee. Let's get on with this thing. Mmm. Nectar of the Brazilian Hills. Ah, no glue! Cut it out. you've stamped out the forest fire, we'll get on with the rehearsal. Forgive me, Commissioner. Sit down, will you, Ben? Stop. What do you get these lapses of memory? Come on. Down by the Ohio, I've got the cutest little Ohio. There ain't nobody half as bright as she, as sweet as can be. And jumping jeepers creepers, she's Daddy, crazy, Daddy. crazy, Daddy. crazy, Daddy. boy. Forget the rehearsal. That's the third interruption. Can I get some work done today? Great artists must have their privacy, you know. But it's getting late and Rusty isn't home yet. So what's so unusual about it? He's probably kept after school. That's par for the course for him. Probably up to his old tricks again. Oh, no. He's not up to his old tricks. How do you know? I taught him some new ones. <laughs> you should hear him play. That. Now get out of here, will you? I know. Maybe I gotta go hey. Oh, hi, Ross. Honey? Rusty. Ru Rush, your mother. Hey, hey, your mother wants to talk to you. Up, up. <laughs> oh, honey, look at that black eye, and your nose has been bleeding. Oh, come and sit down, sweetheart. What happened? What happened? He was in a fight. What happened? Fight, oh, Rusty, not again. So what? It's good for his mathematics. If he gets knocked out often enough, he can learn to count to ten. That's fine. Your only son is turning into a common hoodlum and you make jokes. What kind of a father are you, anyway? Aren't you going to say something to him? How many times did I tell Don't you not to... Don't shut him! <laughs> make up your mind, will you? Poor child is in need of comfort and you yell. What kind of a father are you? What kind of father do you want? Well, what kind of a father have you got? Shut up! <laughs> Well, of course we want to hear what you've got to say, sweetheart. Now, 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 tell us, how did this fight start? Well, I was walking home from school. Yeah? When, for no good reason, a boy in my class called me a girl. A girl? Well, did you tell him you were a boy? No, but I socked him like one. Out of baby, out of baby. Williams? The winner and still champion, Rocky Williams. <laughs> oh, cut it out. Cut it out now. Isn't that the typical male attitude? Just solve everything with the fist. Now sit down, sweetheart, and tell me. Look, honey, when, when this boy called you a girl, couldn't you just talk to him nicely? Well, what would you do if someone called you a boy? I'd have a long talk with my dressmaker. <laughs> Baby, why did this character call you a girl? He's a pest, always making fun of my hair. He calls me curly. It should happen to me. <laughs> well, I'll put an end to this nonsense once and for all. What are you going to do, honey? Call the boy's father? No, I'm going to give Rusty a short haircut. What? Come on. You are not. I am too, and I mean a butch. Well, I want a baldy. That's right. <laughs> beautiful head of hair. You want to cut it all off just because some some idiot child called him a silly name? Come on, let me wash off your face. The way you're making such a fuss about cutting his hair, you think he was Samson or something. He'll only get no more fight. He will not! Rusty, honey, now, now look, sweetie. If this boy calls you any more names, you, you just won't pay any attention. Right? Right. After 
I hit him, I won't pay any attention. <laughs> now, what do you expect? And besides, he's growing up. It's about time he got a haircut and looked like a man. You want to be a man, don't you, son? Like you, Daddy. Atta boy. Yeah, but what will he look like with, with straight hair? I should have brought my toupee, and we could test him. <laughs> Stop being so ridiculous, really. This is important. Look, honey, let go of him. What are you being such a mother about? Let the kid grow up. I say you should go to the barber. I wish you'd stop talking about the barber so much. You're making me feel miserable. <laughs> I know what, Uncle Benny. When he cuts off my hair, we can put it on you. Oh, great. Anybody got a dime for a bottle of glue? <laughs> no, honey, I think we ought, we ought to think about this. I mean, uh, how, how long will we have Rusty this way? This way with a black eye and a bloody nose? Come on, wash him up. I'm taking him to the barber. No, I won't. Honey, I, I'll just take you to school and, and I'll have a long talk with that boy that hit you. You recognize him easy. He's got two black eyes. <laughs> and two bloody noses. <laughs> Greetings. Now here's a girl. And getting girlier and girlier every day, I'm happy to say. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Rusty. What happened to you? Jimbo called me a girl and we got into a fight. You got him cleaned off yet. I tell you, he's gonna go to the barber. He'll be happier with a butch. A butch? That's right, honey. Your, your father wants Rusty to have a man's haircut. Oh, no. You mean cut off his beautiful curls? Oh, Daddy, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Yes, I'm sure I'm doing the right thing. Well, I think this should be brought before the family council. You're right, honey. You're, you're absolutely right. We'll take a vote on it. I say no. Terry? I say no. I say yes. Two against one, no haircut. We hold win. Hold it, hold it. Rusty didn't vote yet. I say she's too young to vote. <laughs> well, when it involves me, he's eligible. All of a sudden, he got too young. Take your hand out of the ballot box. <laughs> Go ahead, son. What do you say? Well, I don't want to be called a girl, but I don't want to hurt Mommy. Daddy thinks I should have a haircut, but Terry's my favorite sister. Get a load of this little bum, a born politician. <laughs> Look, you can't please everybody. Now, just please yourself in this instance. What do you say? All right, curls are for girls. I want a butch. Now you're oh, talking. Oh, Rusty, I'll lose my little baby. Let him alone, will you, honey? I'll take him right down to Harry Gelbart. I'll it downstairs and we'll sit Rusty? Him. <coughs> Bye, sweetheart. <laughs> Goodbye, Russell, dear. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Mommy. Goodbye, honey. He's not going to Devil's Island, you know. <laughs> That's downstairs, next door. That's all. Come on, where's your coat? <laughs> Goodbye. And remember, Margaret, you may be losing a little baby, but you're gaining a boy. <laughs> Hello, Sandy, get me the barbershop downstairs, quick. Uh, hello? H hello, Harry? This is Mrs. Williams upstairs. Look, look, Danny just left the apartment. Uh-huh. He he's bringing Rusty downstairs for a butch haircut. What do you mean? It will not be a pleasure. <laughs> look, Harry, you cut that boy's hair, and, and I'll tell all your customers that Benny Lefty has been using your hair restore for the last 40 years. <laughs> I'm not joking, Harry. You cut one curl off that boy's head, and I'll give you a haircut. Starting at the throat. <laughs> Gee, Mommy, when you get mad, you're a tiger. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> I don't understand you, Harry. What are you acting so silly about? Will you please cut the kid's hair? I, uh, Rustic, I don't know what it is with your father that he didn't tell you. When you come into the shop, you don't get snip snipping at all. For me, you get artistic work. You get magnificent cuttings. You get the work of a genius. Don't you ever get a haircut? <laughs> Why, John, like the father? Come on, Harry, stop fooling. All right, all right, all right, don't rush me. It wasn't born in a day, that horrid thing here. Are you please, come on. <laughs> don't rush me. After all, look at that head. This is a little boy's head. Yeah. This hair never was cut short before. I know. This has got to be done delicately. Okay. Please. I will cut. <laughs> <laughs> 
Go right in. Oh, but don't rush. <laughs> Wait a minute. You haven't cut a hair off his head. I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do I it? I just can't do it. Now force yourself. I so do I. But I don't. Look, you could kill me, you could cut me up in little bits of pieces. Uh, wait there and just don't hit me. But then it's impossible to cut that beautiful hair. But they'll call me a girl. So punch him and die. I did that. That's how he got that. <laughs> Please. I, I just don't feel it. I, I can't feel it. Look, let me put it this way here. Could you push Michelangelo if he done by the paint? The same thing you cannot push Gilbert. I say you don't I say I don't do it. Hey, what's the matter? Are you crazy or something? Daddy, don't fight me. It's bigger than the boat in us. <laughs> bigger than the boat in us? Together. Bigger than the boat in us together. Let's get out of here. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Benny. Let's go. Get your coat. What a beautiful haircut. You can't even tell he got one. <laughs> he didn't get one. 9,000 barbers in New York, and I got to pick on Weber and Field here. <laughs> You're looking out the window of a new Dodge as it speeds the test track. See how the wheel bounces over the rough pavement. But now, notice how smoothly the fender rides above it. That's because exclusive Auraflow shock absorbers and Dodge coil springs take up those bumps before they ever reach the chassis to cushion your ride as no other medium-priced car can. Superior riding comfort is just one of the many Dodge differences that has to be experienced to be appreciated. But of course, the styling of the new Dodge can be appreciated just by looking. Why, it's up to nine inches longer than cars at a comparable price. And Dodge is bigger inside, too. You can see for yourself that with this car, there's been no stinting of the spacious head, seat, and leg room. You can check the control tower vision of the fully swept back New Horizon windshield. And you can even feel the solid ruggedness of this car by just closing the door. Now these things tell you a lot about Dodge, but until you actually sit behind the wheel and awaken that superpower Red Ram V8 engine, until you touch the power flight rain selector on the panel and take off, until then, you can never really know what a particularly wonderful car the new Dodge is. A lot of people have driven the new Dodge and have compared all its advantages with other cars, costing much more. What they learned has nearly doubled Dodge sales throughout the country. But after all, sales records and sales talk can never take the place of personal experience. So why don't you make tomorrow your day to get that personal experience by driving a new Dodge? Your nearby Dodge dealer will be glad to make one available at no obligation to you. Take command... Get the thrill firsthand. Then I'm sure you'll agree with the many thousands of new Dodge owners who know that Dodge outvalues every car on the road. What's that guy refusing to cut the kids here? I've never seen such a... He acted like it was crazy or something. Oh. What happened? Did you get down there and find out you didn't have enough money? No, the barber was chicken. <laughs> My own barber wouldn't cut his hair. Well, of course he wouldn't. Uh, I mean, do you think he's as, as ruthless as you, a father who with one stroke wants to remove his son's youthful beauty? <laughs> well, thank you, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <laughs> Joe Bart's not the only barber in town. As soon as I've had a sandwich, I'll take him to another shop. You will not! I will, so. Danny, I've got a lot of marketing to do. Well, go and do it. I will not. Nothing is going to happen here. I'm not going to leave this apartment until you promise me that you won't take him to any more barbers. Margaret, I tell you, he's got to go. <laughs> okay. I promise. You do? Yeah, I promise. Well, I like it. I still think you should go to the barber. Danny, you promised me I'm not leaving. Now, remember, I trust you. Okay. Danny, see that he keeps his promise. <laughs> Aren't I ever 
going to get a chance to be a big man? Oh, honey, there's lots of time for you to have your hair cut. Sure. Wait till you start tripping over it. <laughs> Funny. Well, I guess I'll have to go. Um, oh, oh, Rusty, honey, go in and change your shirt, dear. And, and Benny, remember what I said. No barbers. Bye. What's that for? I promise I wouldn't take him to the barber, but I didn't say anything about cutting it myself. Dad, are you crazy? What do you mean, crazy? No kid is gonna call my son a girl. Well, don't take it out on Rusty. Give the other kid a haircut. <laughs> and besides, what do you know about cutting hair? Look, I've had enough haircuts to know how to give one to a little kid. That's what you think. When you get through with him, he won't look like a boy or a girl. <laughs> So I'll practice on somebody first. That's a good idea. Who are you going to practice on? <laughs> oh, no, not on me. I don't have much. What I've got, I've grown attached now, to. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to touch you. Just sit in the chair. I promise I won't snip any. Just, just sit in the chair. I, I want to give it a, you know, so I have a professional touch. So the kid won't be frightened. You understand? I just want to... Look uh, what I'm what's doing. the ball for? I thought you were going to give him a butch. <laughs> Tommy, I got to get a straight hairline, don't I? Now, hold still. Put your face that way. <laughs> oh! What's the matter? Oh, it's cold. <laughs> You're lucky I poured out the sour cream. <laughs> and it's a little small. Try this one here. <laughs> Anchors away, me lad, heave ho to sea. <laughs> this one ought to do all right. <laughs> Space Patrol Lessie, boys and girls, zoom. Before the after five landings, stand by. Why don't you cut it out? Oh, come on. You don't know anything about cutting hair? By the time you get through with Rusty, you look like a chicken. Come oh, on, what do you look like? And besides, how are you going to get him to sit still for this haircut? I'll get him to sit still, all right. There's a great bond of mutual trust and understanding between me and my son. Whatever I tell him to do, he'll do. Rusty! Ross! Come out, son. Listen, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Daddy's gonna cut your hair. Yay! What's that? <laughs> Rusty, I won't hurt you. I know how to do it. Uh, I like the door. I like the door. I've never seen such mutual trust and understanding. I know what we'll do. We'll lure him in here. Make believe like we're having a party, see? And then he'll come in to join the party. You hide behind the door. When he comes through, throw the tablecloth around him. I'll drop the bowl on his head and start cutting. Danny, are you sure you're not related to Jack the Ripper? <laughs> Stop with the jokes. Go on back at the door. Rusty! Rusty! Come on, son. I'm not going to cut your hair. Ross, you're right. I don't know anything about it. So forget it. Uh, come and join the party. We're having a great party out here. Real party we're having, Ross. Are you really having a party? Yeah. Well, pass the ice cream bonbons, Benny. Your own flesh and blood. <laughs> this ice cream is great. I think I'll sit over here and eat mine. <laughs> well, have some, Benny. My Thank favorite you. flavor, chocolate. I don't like chocolate. I like strawberry. <laughs> it's only made when we... Well, let's make believe in the right flavor. <laughs> Come on, back to the Ah, uh, this ice cream is wonderful. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, boy. Mmm. Geronimo! Adam, hey, hang on! Hang on! Help! 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 go around! Go around! Help! 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 You're not afraid of your own father, are you? I don't know why, Daddy, but I am. Come over here. I want to... I wanna, come here. I, 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 I,
down to Gelbart tomorrow. And Gelbart will cut his hair or I will give him a bump on his head that'll be bigger than both nuts. <laughs> Take you down to Gelbart and you'll get your first big man butch. How about that? You'll be a big man at last. Here, here's your teddy bear. I don't need him, Daddy. I'm going to get a butch. I'm a big man. <laughs> okay. Lie down. I'll tuck you in. You don't need to tuck me in, Daddy. I like to tuck you in. You mind? I'm your father. I always tuck you in. That was when I was a baby. You don't tuck in a big man, do you? Come on, I'm going to tuck you in. Oh, uh, Mommy doesn't tuck you in, does she? <laughs> That's different. Why aren't you a real man? <laughs> Never mind. Come on, go to sleep. You don't want the teddy bear? No. <laughs> I remember the first day I bought you that teddy bear. You couldn't have been much more than three years old. And I brought him home, and you jumped up and down, you clapped your hands, and you said, No, Dowie, I won't be afraid to sleep anymore. <laughs> you used to talk like that. I did? Yeah. Yeah, and I used to come in a little later and look at you and see if everything was all right, and you'd be sleeping there with your little curly head next to old teddy bear here. Time moves on a little bit, doesn't it? Good night, ma'am. Good night, Dad. Russ. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I think, uh, I think Mommy's right about this. I mean, uh, look, Russ, you've got plenty of time to grow up. You'll be a big man soon enough. What do you say we forget all about this butch for another year, huh? But I thought you wanted me to have a butch. Well, I did, but I think you're too young to look so old so soon. If I look old, that'll make you look real old, won't it, Daddy? <laughs> you're enough to age anybody. <laughs> go to sleep. You sure you don't want the teddy bear? I can go to sleep without him. I'm a big man. Mm. I think it's kind of nice to have a teddy bear to cuddle up to. Okay, you send Mommy in here and sleep with a teddy bear. It's not that nice. <laughs> silly giggle. I can't help it. I mean, yesterday you were bound and determined that Rusty was going to have a butch haircut, and today you can't go through with it. <laughs> you old softy. Me? Hmm? What you know, I did it for you. Huh? Sure, I mean, after all, I know you got a mother's heart, and you don't want to see your son grow up too fast, and I've got to respect you, after all. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm Gibraltar when it comes to a thing like this. I'd give him a butch haircut in a minute. I want my boy to grow up. <laughs> what is it? 
they do to my little boy? Little boy? He looks 40 years old. <laughs> I figured if I waited for you two to take me to the barber, I'd never get a haircut. So I went with Uncle Benny. Oh, bless me, my baby. Those beautiful curls. I'll never see him again. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> And now a word from our alternate sponsor, Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes. Reward yourself. Reward yourself with the pleasure of smooth smoking. Refresh yourself with freshly lit flavor. Smoke longer and finer and milder Pell-Mell. Enjoy smooth, gentle mildness. Pell-Mell is never strong, and it tastes freshly lit puff after puff. Here's why. Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. And you get more than greater length. Fine tobacco is its own best filter, and Pell-Mell tobaccos are the finest quality money can buy. Blended to a flavor peak, delicious, and distinctively Pell-Mell. Enjoy a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette can offer you. Buy Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes in the Distinguished Red Package today. Outstanding. And they are mild. back next week for Palmero Famous Cigarettes, folks. This week, drop in at your nearby Dodge dealer and get a real close-up look at the most stylish new automobile in America, the flare-fashioned new Dodge. It'll take your breath away. Good, Good night. night. Daddy is presented alternately by Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes and the dependable Dodge dealer in your neighborhood. <laughs>